This is Crime, Mr. Wade, bringing you the stories. Stay tuned for a lot more. Child killer Mary Beth Tinning of Schenectady has just been denied parole again. Tinning was convicted back in 1987 of killing her four-month-old daughter, Tammy Lynn, smothering her with a pillow. Tinning had nine children. All of them died in infancy or just beyond. At first, it was thought they all died of SIDS or something possibly caused by some genetic disorder. Eventually, though, authorities came to believe she killed eight of the nine. She confessed to three of those killings, sentenced to 20 years to life on the one murder of Tammy Lynn. This was her fourth time up for parole. And Today's unfortunate story is about a Mary Beth Rao Tinning, an American murderer and suspected serial killer who was convicted in New York State of the murder of her ninth child. A four-month-old daughter named Tammy Lynn on December 20th, year 1985. She is suspected to be similarly involved in the previous deaths of her eight children all of which took place within the span of 14 years. Mary Beth Rao was born in a small town of Dannisburg, New York. There is little information available regarding her formative years. During some of this time, Mary Beth's father was deployed overseas, fighting in World War II, while her mother worked because both parents were frequently absent, Mary Beth was occasionally shuffled among relatives. One elderly relative told her that she was unwanted, an accidental child. When her little brother reached adolescence, Mary Beth told him, you were the one they wanted, not me. And a local woman who was convicted of killing one of her children is no longer on parole. The State Department of Corrections saying Mary Beth Tinning was released from post-release supervision in July. She served 30 years in prison for killing her four-month-old daughter, Tammy Lynn, in 1985. Tinning, who is now in her 80s, was released from prison five years ago. Eight of her children died under suspicious circumstances. On completion of his active duty, Mary Beth's father worked as a press operator in a nearby General Electric factory which was the area's largest employer at the time. As an adult, she once claimed that her father abused her when she was a child. During a police interview in the year of 1986, she told one investigator that her father had beaten her and locked her in the closet. During court testimony, she denied that her father had bad intentions. She stated, my father hit me with a fly swatter she eventually told the court because he had arthritis and his hands were not of much use and when he locked me in my room i guess he thought i deserved it mary beth was an avid student of duanesburg high school from which she graduated in the year of 1961. following high school she worked at various low-paying unskilled jobs she eventually settled on a job as a nursing assistant at Ellis Hospital in Skinsonati, New York, 10 miles north of Dennisburg. In the year of 1963, Mary Beth met Joseph Tiny on a blind date. They married in the year of 1965, and their first child, Barbara, was born in May the year of 1967, followed in January 1970 by a Joseph Jr. In October 1971, Mary Beth's father died of a heart attack. In the year of 1974, Joseph was admitted into the hospital with a near fatal case of barbiturate poisoning. Later, he and Mary Beth acknowledged that when this incident occurred, their marriage was in heavy turmoil. This led to her placing barbiturate pills around the house, which she took from a friend with an epileptic daughter. She would place it into Joseph grape juice from time to time. He declined to press charges against her. Her mother-in-law 
and the tinny testified that any of these kids, when you picked them up, it was like a, a sack of water. It was these kids didn't have muscle tone. She went off to prison proclaiming her innocence. Now she's done 20 years, but the parole board says she'll stay in prison for at least two more. DA Bob Carney, for one, thinks that's just. On December 26, year of 1971, the Tenning's third child, Jennifer, was born at St. Clair's Hospital. She had hemorrhagic myphonitis and multiple brain abscesses that had developed in her utero. She lived for only a week and never left the hospital. She died January 3rd, year 1972. Two weeks after Jennings death, Tenning took her two-year-old Joseph Jr. to the Ellis Hospital emergency room in Sketch Lady, claiming that he had experienced a seizure and choked on his own vomit. Doctors found nothing wrong with him. He stayed in the hospital for several days under observation and was released on January 20th. A few hours after his release, Mary Breath brought him back to the emergency room. He was dead on arrival and his death was attributed to cardiac arrest. On March 1st, Mary Beth rushed Barbara, now almost five years old, to Ellis Hospital because she had gone into convulsions. The next day she died after being in a coma for several hours. Her death was attributed to Ray Syndrome. On November 22nd, year of 1973, Miss Tenning gave birth to son Timothy on December 10th. He was brought back to the hospital dead. Tenning told doctors she found him lifeless in the crib. Doctors attribute his death to sudden infant death syndrome. In March 1975, Tenning's fifth child, Nathan, was born that autumn. He died in a car while out with her. In August 1978, the Tennings adopted newborn Michael. On October 29th, Mary gave birth to her sixth child, Mary Frances. In January year 1979, she rushed her to the emergency room, directly across the street from their apartment, saying she was having a seizure. The staff was able to revive her, reporting aborted SIDS, a month later, Tenning returned to the hospital with her in full cardiac arrest. She was revived but had irreversible brain damage. She died two days later after being taken off life support. The Tenning's eighth child, Jonathan, was born in fall in the year of 1979. He died in March the year of 1980 after being kept on life support in Albany for four weeks. In February year of 1981, Michael fell down the stairs and suffered a concussion. On March 2nd, Tenney took him to the doctor because he would not wake up. He was already dead when she arrived. Since she was adopted, the long suspected belief that the deaths in the Tenney family was a genetic origin was all discarded. Tammy Lynn was born on August 22nd, the year of 1985. On December 20th, she died from asphyxia. On that day, the Tennings were visited by Betsy Mannix of Schenectady County's Department of Social Services and by Bob Enfield of the Schenectady Police Department concerning Tammy Lynn's death. The causes of the children's deaths were listed diversely as natural, undetermined, or SIDS. Six autopsies of them took place after Tammy Lynn's death. 
but they did not reveal any signs of abuse. Prior to Tammy Lynn's death, there had been no suspicion found in sequence of deaths. Stated, there were so many of us on it, I guess, said the doctor. If anyone is negligent, I suppose I am. I probably should have said, there must be more to this than this, what we all think and don't do. Mary Beth and Joseph Tinney were separately taken to Schenectady Police Department for questioning about Tammy Lynn's death. During the police interrogation, Mary Beth signed a document confessing that she had murdered Tammy Lynn, Timothy, and Nathan. She was arrested and charged with Tammy Lynn's murder. Mary Beth later claimed that her confession was made under duress, that police had threatened her, and that her repeated request for a lawyer was denied. The lead forensic pathologist and a member of the New York State Police Special Forensic Unit determined that Tammy Lynn's death was a result of smothering. After charging Mary Beth in the killing, officials said that they considered the deaths of the eight other tending children to be suspicious. Mary Beth Tinning made a $100,000 bail payment and was released from custody until her trial date. Tinning has to take some blame for that. Some other husband might have been more active. Through it all, Joe Tinning stayed by his wife's side, even after the courtroom exploded with the allegation that Mary Beth Tinning had tried to poison him. <laughs> Tinning's murder trial began in Schenectady County Court on June 22, the year of 1987. Dr. Bradley Ford, Tammy Lynn's pediatrician, testified on behalf of the prosecution, saying Tinning had dismissed his suggestion that due to her previous children's death, she should still specialize alarm device enabling the monitoring of a baby's breathing and heart rate. Two additional prosecution witnesses stated that they had concluded that Tammy Lynn was smothered to death with a soft object. After a six week trial, the jury deliberated for 23 hours across three days and found Tenney guilty of one count of second degree murder. Tinning received a sentence of 20 years to life in prison, five years shorter than the maximum penalty for the crime. She was imprisoned at the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women. She appealed on the grounds that her confession was not voluntary given and that her conviction was not supported by sufficient evidence. In the year of 1988, her appeal was denied by the New York State Supreme Court's Appellate Division. After six attempts for parole, Miss Tenney, at the age of 76, was released on parole on August 21st in the year 2018. After serving 31 years, her husband Joseph, who has supported her throughout her imprisonment, was present for her release. As part of her release, Tenney was ordered to remain under parole supervision for the rest of her life. A Department of Corrections spokesperson stated, Tenney lives in Schenectady County. She has a curfew and must attend domestic violence counseling. I hope you enjoy the unfortunate story of Mary Beth Rao Tinney. I, Mr. Wade and Mrs. Crime. And once again, we bring it to you.